right, guys, it's Jalan from the Paradox Gaming Network, and today I am bringing you part two of the 4.5 skill changes video series. Today I'm going to talk about the passive changes, but I'm only going to talk about the first four main trees. Just way too many passive changes to talk about all in one video. As always, here's all the ways to get in touch with me. Discord is the easiest, Jalan hashtag 8446. I do Arcage 101 live on Fridays on Twitch at the times below. So to get right into things today, I'm going to talk about passives. I'm going to tell you why I did the passives first. And then I'm going to talk about changes to the main buffs or debuffs from each tree, like Inspire, Shaken, all those. And then I'm going to break down all of the passive changes. Uh, you're going to find some notes in yellow on my slides. Uh, a lot of the translations are like I'm like 99% sure of. A couple of them I just couldn't make heads or tails of. Any assumptions I've made, I've made sure to annotate those in yellow so that uh, I make sure to talk about why I think it's an assumption to give you guys the best uh, best insight into the upcoming changes. Uh, one thing when it comes to all these translations, am I ever going to do this translating stuff again? Never again. Never. Uh, I have a newfound respect for Mark at Omnom. This took me forever just to do the passives. I don't know how that guy does all the numbers. So make sure to check out Mark's page at Omnom.io. So why passives first? Uh, number one, they've changed so much. People are going to really have to dig into them. I think you're going to like the way I broke down the information. Uh, personally, I've always decided how many points I'm going to put into a tree in order to get to certain passives. Real easy case in point is people who take Songcraft for zeal. They have to go 11 points into Songcraft to get zeal. So they really are building the points around the passive. And the builds or the classes even that you're going to use, those are going to change now that a lot of the passives, passives have changed. Uh, so, like I talked about in the first video, two of your passives are now locked behind that Abyssal skill. The benefit is it's going to free up two skill points, uh, because when you take that Abyssal, you get those two skill points for free. Uh, the drawback is, is that you're going to have to take, uh, basically your primary tree's passive in most cases, um, because that's where your damage buff or your healing buff now is behind the Abyssal skill. Uh, so this is no doubt going to change some classes. Uh, it does leave an opening for some interesting builds. We're going to talk about those in part B of this video series. So jump right into it in archery. Uh, as you can see, I've put the current tree on top and I've put the new tree on the bottom. So you can see where some passives have shuffled. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the passives shuffling in any tree. I'm just going to tell you uh, how the passives lay out. Uh, for archery, of course, uh, one of the backbones of archery is Feral Mark. Uh, Feral Mark used to reduce the target's defense, gave you uh, reduced evasion and block rate, uh, increased your damage uh, because of changing uh, their max defense and evasion block and parry rate. Now, Feral Mark increases uh, your attack speed and reduces your cooldowns. Uh, so that is a big organic change to how Feral Mark is going to work. Uh, for your two Abyssal passives, your first one is Archery Expertise. This used to reduce all cooldowns. Well, not all, but this used to reduce the cooldowns on most of your ranged attacks, most of your named shots by 10%. Now it reduces block rate by 40% when using aim shot, serpent shot, uh, when you have double recurve active. And I think the translation says endless arrows, but uh, don't, don't start to make a build all around that. Be like, oh, and Jalan said, no, I think it's endless arrows. Um, I'll test that on the PTS when we get it. Uh, the next one, kind of a, kind of a freebie archery got. Uh, Sharpshooter used to give 5 meters to all bow skills. Sharpshooter now gives 10% to all ranged skill damage. Now, one thing I do have to uh, look into when it comes on the PTS is 
before the bonus passive would say all archery skills or all battle rage skills, uh, this says all ranged skill damage. Stalker's Mark may or may not get a benefit from this. Uh, the big changes in your passives. Uh, Eagle Eyes. Uh, Eagle Eyes is kind of a big one. Uh, you're getting 4% crit rate more, but you are losing accuracy off of it at face value. Uh, we'll, I'm going to show you a number crunching slide uh, that talks about accuracy in a little bit. Uh, Wild Instincts, no change. Uh, Feral Claws, as you can see, archery skill damage used to be increased by 15%. Now it's ranged skill damage and it's 10. Uh, and now all it does is it's the Feral Claw uh, mark passive. Uh, evasion, you're losing 10% evasion off the top. You're picking up 12% agility. Hang with me. We're gonna we're gonna align this up. And then sharpshooting. Sharpshooting used to give 3% crit rate and 15% uh, crit damage. And it was the feral mark passive. Now what it does is if the target's outside 25 meters, it increases range by 20%. Now, I know when you look at each individual passive, the problem is you're looking at each individual one in kind of in a vacuum. So you're like, oh, this is good. This is bad. Uh, so what I did was is I listed all the gains and losses for archery. And uh, I just here's here you go. I just straight gains and losses. Pause the slide if you want to see the breakdown. Uh, what I've done now is I have kind of tried to line them up uh, so that we can compare. Uh, so as you can see, uh, you're gaining a two-second cooldown reduction in Feral Mark. You used to have a flat 10%. So uh, I tried to line them up. And then what I did was I tried to do an accounting across the columns to see where things are good. So as you can notice, although it sounded good that you're getting plus 9% crit rate, <clears throat> you're only getting 1% crit rate on the top because you're losing 8% crit rate from another passive. So this kind of breaks down uh, where we're at. Now this yellow box, your big thing is you're gaining 12% agility, but is 12% agility gonna make up for all those other things that you lost? Uh, before I jump to that, as you can see, I crossed off the two second uh, reduction in the cooldown because 10% uh, on the cooldown is was better. Um, the two second reduce cooldown now affects all skills, but 10% was more than two seconds in most cases. So here we go. Here is the theory craft for 12% more agility. And what I've done is I've based it on a thousand agility and 1300 agility, just to try to gauge where you might be at. So on a thousand agility, you're going to pick up 120 more. That's going to give you 24 ranged attack power. 1.5% uh, accuracy, 1.2% evasion. And now here's the big one. It's going to give you 3.24% crit rate, but uh, you gotta, I, I factored in a the skill change that we talked about last video. That, thousand, that base 1,000 agility is also getting a 0.014% bump uh, in its crit rate. And then to guess, just to put a guesstimate on it, I assume that you were getting 3% from your int. Now that could be plus minus, so just realize this is kind of fluid theory craft. So I gave basically a plus 11% on the crit rate due to the other changes. Uh, I did the same thing for 1300 agility. Again, you can pause the slide if you want to line up the numbers. And so what you're seeing is you lost 5% accuracy. And you don't make that back. Uh, you're losing 5% damage right off the top. And you're not making that back either. The ranged attack power is not going to make up for 5% skill damage. You didn't make up the 10% evasion. Uh, not even close. And nothing in the agility is going to increase your range crit damage. What you did pick up is you picked up 15 to 20 percent crit rate so in that first video i said archers are getting this huge big buff uh 
it's still premature to do the final discussions on that. But I will say in retrospect, uh, looking at each skill in a vacuum is what I did. And I was like, oh my god, they're getting this huge buff. Uh, they're not. They're, they're getting changed significantly, but they do take a lot of losses. So I'm going to give the archers just a second to pause this slide if they want to. And now we're going to go into Battle Rage. Now, Battle Rage, it's, it's known for Delirium. Now, I know when I was talking through this with a couple of people, some people also said Shaken. Uh, truthfully, Shaken is more uh, Oromancy or Defense. So I put Delirium in Battle Rage because that's where it comes from. Uh, losing a bit on Delirium. Uh, you used to get 2% melee skill damage, 5% uh, melee crit damage, and then a 5% chance to inflict a bleed from Delirium. Now you're getting attack speed and you're getting melee critical damage. You lost that um, straight melee skill damage off of Delirium. For your Abyssals, you now have Reckless Charge behind the Abyssal passives. And uh, now the new version of Reckless Charge reduces physical damage by 15%. And it looks like it decreases block rate. Uh, but I'm not quite 100% sure. That's why it's in yellow. Um, I know that I don't see any of the text for reducing those debuffs uh, anymore in the in the uh, skill description. Uh, again, Weapon Mastery, it used to be 15% damage to all Battle Rage skills. Now it says it's 10% melee damage. Uh, I've put a note in there to check Shadow Play's melee damage to see if it is a crossover. I'm going to guess it's not, but literal translation says melee damage. Uh, a couple of more changes uh, in the straight passives. Uh, dual wield proficiency uh, used to be this passive that allowed you to parry ranged attacks. That's not the case anymore. Uh, now that just gives you plus 9% crit rate. Deflect and retaliate now gives you the ability to uh, parry ranged attacks when dual wielding. But it no longer says anything about... Uh, it no longer says anything about uh, the parry rate as a permanent 2%. Uh, the attack speed training no longer gives a 10% cooldown on Battle Rage uh, cooldowns. Uh, it is the new Delirium skill. All it does is uh, provide the Delirium buff. Uh, weapon maneuvers, again, this was melee attack plus 5%. And now it is increases strength by 12%. So yes, I'm going to do another theory craft breakdown here in just a second. Uh, the only thing that changed with Puncture is it changed it from 2,000 to 3,000. Now again, your pluses and minuses. Uh, just going to let this sit on the screen for a second if you want to see them as they lie. Uh, there is your pickup, so there's not a lot of direct uh, things need to line out. But we do need to talk about this strength and the comparison to what it does. So again, I did the uh, breakdown of what strength is going to give you on 1,000 and 1,300. So 120 strength is going to give that 24 melee attack power right here. Now, in a red at the bottom... 5% melee attack on a T6 epic uh, would be uh, 2854, and then 5% on that initial 1k strength, its damage coefficient, that would take you up to about 38.54. So no, the strength is not going to overcome that. Uh, you're picking up some accuracy. You're picking up a lot of crit rate because of the crit rate change from agility into strength. Um, you're basically on a thousand strength. You're picking up about 30% crit rate. Uh, you do pick up parry on that initial 120 strength. And because of the shuffle, uh, you are gaining 14% uh, parry. Now, what you notice I didn't put on the slides is I didn't put how much shield block you're, you're losing. 
but that was just going to be a cascade of this, that, the other, trying to keep it, uh, trying to keep it compared to the losses sustained in Battle Rage, and are those offset by the strength, uh, twelve percent, and the changes to just strength? Uh, so I am acknowledging there is other stuff going on, but trying to keep it as simple as I can. Uh, 1300 strength, uh, same thing. Uh, you're picking up melee attack. Now, you'll notice on this, I didn't go apples to apples. I figure if you have 1000 strength, you're probably at an epic T6. Uh, I'm making the uh, statement that if you're at 1300 strength, you're probably closer to a legendary T7. So I did affect those numbers accordingly. Uh, for that 5% melee to not underplay uh, losing it. So again, 156 strength is going to give us 31 melee attack power, 5% uh, melee attack on a legendary T7 weapon, and just the weapon would have given us 44.9. So yes, we did not make that back up. Of course, you're gaining accuracy, gaining a lot of crit rate again um, from the 156 plus the um getting all that strength on your crit rate now of course you'll notice again i uh, did not do a negative modifier on agility the reason i didn't is because again not really applicable because in this build um you wouldn't be getting it anyway it's it's i just want to make sure to say yes i didn't factor x in so it's acknowledged uh picking up parry rate a whole lot of parry rate so your losses, you lost quite a bit of damage off the top. You lost straight skill damage, uh, which we'll talk about when we do the skill damage discussion. You also lost that flat battle rage skill damage. Again, that gets factored in when we talk about the skill damage. And losing that 5% melee attack, strength did not get you there. But that 30 to 35% crit rate, that is a huge, a huge bump up. Uh, so... Factor that, keep that in mind. And we are back, and now we are talking about sorcery. And to talk about sorcery, we first got to talk about Mana Fountain. Now, Mana Fountain took a very specific change, and I want people to realize that the big change it took is Flame Bolt no longer applies it. Uh, Flame Bolt allowed a uh, sorcerer to basically keep Mana Fountain up pretty continuously. Now it goes up with Frigid Tracks Insulating Lens or Magic Circle. So there isn't an attack that's just going to keep proccing this. What it does is it is now 150 attack speed, 10% cast time, and it reduces your physical defense by only 20%. But this is a uh, hit in the cast time of 6%. Uh, so that is significant. Uh, the passives, the ones that are locked behind the abyssal skills you've got mana range boost which will need a new name and is no longer a mana range boost it now reduces the silence debuff by 30 percent uh magic precision it used to be magic crit rate by 10 percent now it's magic skill damage by 10 percent so as you've seen with the other two trees the 10 percent damage buff is locked behind the abyssal some more changes uh Recuperation used to be a sleep and fear duration reduction of 10%. Now it's a flat increase of magic crit rate of 9%. Uh, mana pool, straight buff on this of 15%. Uh, mana flurry used to be cast time 6% and mana fountain. Now it's just mana fountain. Efficient sorcery. Used to decrease mana costs by all sorcery skills by 20%. Now it's just 12% intelligence. Like you saw, every tree got 12% to their main stat. Now, as a side note here, I will remind you that all skills across the board had their mana reduced. Some of them quite significantly. So that passive uh, may not be as uh, detrimental as it seems right off the bat. And then Arid and Zeb's Infusion, again, used to be straight sorcery damage, 15%. Now you're picking up 8% cast time. So, again, here's all the gains and losses by the passives. 
And I lined these up line by line the best that I could. And so here's the accounting since there are things across the board from each other. So as you can see, they, they line up, but once you hash them all out, there's not a lot of lining across. Now, unlike Archery and Battle Rage, where I was able to crunch the numbers because there were some very specific uh, losses in melee attack or ranged attack and those uh, in intelligence and strength uh, impact those, I can't really do a number crunching for intelligence uh, against what you lost because it's not a direct impact. Intelligence does not affect cast time or cooldowns or the range loss. Uh, yes, you do make up that 1% crit you lost. You make up a lot of crit uh, chance, uh, but we'll do all that number crunching for sorcery uh, in the skills discussion video because that's where intelligence will have more of an impact. And finally, to talk about vitalism, uh, vitalism is not as bad off as I originally thought. Uh, it's going to be a lot different. So the first thing is our main buff is prayer. Now, previously, each time antithesis mend or fervent healing was used, you gain a stack of prayer and it would reduce cast time by 2%. And at five stacks, it would trigger sacrifice, uh, which then would decrease cast time, and it gave a combo to mend it and fuse. Now the cast time is six percent per stack. So when you get to, by the time you get to five stacks, you're at thirty percent cast time reduction. While in the prayer state, you're also at thirty percent cast time reduction, and prayer is no longer eaten by infuse it only combos with mend so uh this is actually a change to uh vitalism users uh it's not a huge benefit it's not as bad of a nerf as i originally said so just keep those uh in your head for a later date when we talk about skills now the abyssal passives uh, this one was really difficult to translate. Uh, Painful Recharge used to convert 3% of damage to mana. It now has a trigger event that reduces silence duration by 40%. Um, I can't even begin to tell you what the translation was. Uh, not because I don't know what it was, but because it would be inappropriate for... Uh, this video if you want to know what the um, the actual trigger event was translating to I'll be more than happy to tell you in discord uh, joyous spirit uh, it used to reduce cooldowns by 20% and give a post cast mana regen buff when under 40% now it increases healing by 10% now I am 99.9% .9 certain this is healing, that stat I always talk about, um, not healing power. So just realize if the time comes and you get on the PTS and you're like, Jalan lied to me, I took this passive and it doesn't increase my healing power. Not healing power, the, the healing stat, which is, which is a stat that's very hard to get. So this change is... This one is a is a is a good one. Uh, invigorated healing, uh, critical heal bonus went from twenty five percent to twenty percent. Uh, quick recovery, no change. Alms, alms used to give a six percent cast time buff. It's now just the passive you take to get the prayer uh, buff. Uh, spirit growth used to give nine percent. It now gives twelve percent, which puts us on par with everybody else. And then Defiance, Defiance used to give 500 magic defense to everybody in 15 meters, and it was the prayer buff passive. Now it only increases mana regen based on spirit. So uh, Vitalism had the most shuffles out of the four main trees where this used to do this and this used to do this at all. It moved around, but there it is. 
Like all the other ones, here are your gains and your losses. And here is them lined up. Uh, and as you can see, nothing lines up except for the cast time. But the cast time was... Uh, one was a static and one is a is based on a buff. So I, I, there's not much I can do with that. And again, there's, there's no number crunching for vitalism because I can't do it in a vacuum. And as you can see, absolutely nothing lines up on this one. So... It's going to be difficult to see what the impact is until we get our hands on this on the PTS. Uh, it, I will do a full number crunching. In fact, um, most people can pretty much rest assured that I will do a number crunching portion of Vitalism with the same uh, equality that I do for Archery, Battle Rage, and Sorcery. And then just rest assured, I'm a healer, so I will go into the healer theory craft much more in depth. Uh, for my own reasons, and then I'll do the video on it. Uh, my sources this time around, guys, uh, Omnom was very useful. Mark, like I said at the beginning, I have a newfound respect for him because this video and the part two of this, this took me 18 hours to translate, uh, and that was already having a good idea of what I was looking for. Um, so never again. I'm going to finish up this project and then never again, Mark. You you have soul soul whatever. I, I I'm not I can't do it. Uh, I gave you some links to uh, the Archage uh, abilities calculator and the Amigo article. Now I will tell you if you don't read Korean, uh, you are going to get a different translation from Google Chrome as you are from Internet Explorer's uh, translate. Uh, I am going to say I'm a huge Chrome fan. The Internet Explorer Bing Translate is a significant bit more accurate. Um, I used ArcH Calculator for the graphics and uh, ArcH Codex. Uh, that is the new ArcH database. Um, thank you to Kayla for telling me that. Uh, they do good work. I'm glad to see that they got their web page problems resolved. Up next, guys, is going to be part 2B of this uh, passives breakdown. And then I'm going to be doing the skill combinations tree synergies. Um, I will not be talking about skill changes, just how they piece together. Uh, when Mark has released the new skill changes, and it's been on his site for a bit, uh, and people have gone there to see it, then I'll do my thing with it and turn it into a video. And that's it, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in this week. Uh, as you can see... Lots of stuff going on in ArcH 4.5, and I want you all to be ready for it. Take care, guys. Hey, you. Yes, you. Yeah, yeah, you. I'm talking to you. Hit that subscribe button. Watch a couple of more videos. Go check out our website.